Hey everyone, so in today's video we'll be making a tabs component in uh, Figma and we'll actually be making two components, one for an individual tab like this and uh, one for the whole list. So for the individual tab we'll be making a couple options such as being able to have a drop down arrow on the right or having a counter on the right or both or also being able to have an icon to the left and of course being able to mark the tab as active such as this uh, shop one here and uh, our second component the full on tabs list we'll just be making a couple of variants to be able to have anywhere between two to nine tabs inside a full tabs list to get us started i have a mostly blank figma file the only things that i have here are the icons which i got from the phosphor icons uh, so this one here and all I did, I just turned them into components and I grouped them into one icons group. This just makes it easier to find them later on. And another thing I did is I set up two colors like this blue and uh, the gray. If you want to learn how to set up colors, I do have a full on tutorial for that. But yeah, just make sure that you have some colors and uh, some icons. It will make it easier and faster for you to create the tabs component. So I'm going to start by creating an individual tab component. First, I'll just do the text layer and uh, let's call this one tab, uh, straighten it out. It's a uh, 16 pixels font size, which is what I want. And then I'll change the color to gray 600. And then I'm going to do shift A to just add the auto layout wrapper around this uh, text layer. And I'll modify it to be a 12 vertical padding. And I actually want zero horizontal. And uh, from here, I'll just rename it as a tab and I can turn it into a component. From here, we can start adding some of our optional props, such as the drop down icon. So I, what I can start doing is I'll grab an instance of that and I'll just drop it inside the tab component. And uh, here I'm going to adjust it first, make it centered and then uh, decrease the spacing to maybe four. And uh, now we don't always want this drop down icon to be shown. So what we're gonna do is hide it by default. What I'm gonna do is go to the layer section here and then click on the icon and uh, I'll just call it drop down and we can do false and create property. So now if I grab an instance of tab, I can still toggle it on and off, but by default, it's not gonna be shown. Our second optional prop that we wanted to add is an ability to have an icon to the right of the tab. So it's going to be the same principle here. I'm going to grab, let's say, an instance of this cookie icon here and just place it inside. And again, same thing. I'm going to go to layer, create property, do icon, and you can also set it to false. And to test the component again, you can either do an icon or both icon and drop down, or you can just do either or. The last optional prop that we want is this uh, counter badge here. And we're actually going to make it as its own separate component because there might be a case where you may want to use it elsewhere. So what I'm going to do is return to our Figma file and uh, make another text layer. Let's just write one and I'll bring the font size down to 14. And same thing as we did with the tab, I am going to wrap this text layer inside auto layout. For the height, I'm actually going to set it to fix to 24 and uh, I'll remove the padding here and I will center this. And then for the horizontal padding, I will do eight. And now we just want to add this a fill, let's say gray 100, so something very light. And uh, let me change this to white so you can see it better. And then we also want this to be kind of like an ellipse shape. And uh, we'll update this to be gray 700. And lastly, let's turn this into a component and we'll change the name to, let's say, counter. Now we're going to take an instance of the counter and we're going to drop it inside our tab component. And now we just want to make sure that the counter is uh, to the left of the tab. So I just turned down the drop down icon just so that I can confirm that. Uh, and it is in its uh, proper place. So I'll toggle this back off from here. Exactly the same thing as we did before with the drop down and the icon. I'm going to go to layer, create a new property, show counter, 
and we'll also set it to false. Now that we have all of our optional blend props inside the tab component, we can go ahead and create our first and only variant, which is going to be the active tab. And the reason I'm doing this in this order is because I only had to add all this extra stuff once. So if I had two variants, I would need to double the amount of work I was doing. So it's just better to do your boolean props first and then move on to adding extra variants. So what I'm going to do from here is select our tab component, go to properties, click plus and add a new variant. And so now, as you can see, it kind of turned into this component set, but I still only have one, uh, our first default variant here. So what I'm going to do is go to this uh, new added property here and uh, I'll just call it selected. And the default is going to be no. And from here, I'm going to add a second variant. And what I'm going to do is actually add the auto layout to the whole set, just so it's easier to manage. And so this one is going to be our default one. This one is going to be our active or selected one. So we'll change it to yes. And for this one, we're just going to update a couple of colors. So instead of gray 600, I want it to be blue 600. And I also wanted to have a bottom border of two pixels and the border is going to be 500. I also want to make sure that all the extra stuff that we have inside the tab component also received the new color update. So what I'm going to do is return to the properties and just toggle all of them to be true. Okay, and now I can also go ahead and make sure that all of these ones are updated as well. And now I can uh, set them back to false. And actually a quick way to do that is I can just use the selector thing and I can do a hiding shortcut. And uh, this way I don't need to go through all these clicks and setting it back to false. Now we're ready to create our second component, which is the tabs list. And what I'm going to do is grab an instance of the, just the regular tab. And I'm going to maybe create like seven or nine copies of it. And let's just go and uh, I selected all of the copies, which are currently just like layered on top of each other. And I added auto layout and it's in horizontal direction, which is what I want. And then uh, spacing between items, maybe I want like 16. And also, let's see. And important thing to note, hopefully you don't need a navigation that has more than nine items in it because it just gets cognitively overwhelming. So this is why we'll be limiting our component to nine. But of course, if for some reason you need it or your designers need it, they can always detach the instance and add more. Uh, the important thing is that uh, we, we do have individual tabs as uh, their own separate component. So if you were to update that component, they would still get those updates. And that's really is the key. Okay, so I have the frame here with nine tabs and I'm going to rename it to tabs and uh, turn it into a component. And the next thing I'm going to do is select all of these tabs do the renaming feature. And what I want to do is actually have the numbers. So I'll keep the current name as name, but then I'll also add a number and then it will start with one. So now what we have is instead of just having each tab being the same name, we have like tab one, tab two, and this will help later on when we'll be showing our nested instance properties. One thing that's currently missing from the tab list is the thin gray underline. So we're just going to add that. I'm going to go to stroke, do a bottom border, and we want it to be two pixels, and then we'll update the color to 400. And now we're ready to add our variants for different number of tabs. So what I'm going to do is go to properties, do variant. So once again, we have this component set here. From here, I'm going to do auto layout again, just so it's easier to organize this. And uh, let's just make a copy and we'll need eight copies because we'll be starting with uh, two tabs. So now what we want to do is to assign the property name and the proper 
property values to this. So first I'm going to rename to property to, let's say, number of tabs. And then for each value, I'm going to select all of our variants and I'll do the rename. So we'll keep the number of tabs, then we'll do equals, and then we'll do ascending, but then we'll start from two. And now as you can see, each variant corresponds to the number that we want. The last thing would be is to actually go through this variants and make sure that they all have the number of tabs that we want them to have. So you're just going to delete the ones you don't need. So now we have just a couple more improvements that we can make and then we'll test out the component and then we'll be done. So the first thing, looking at the tabs overall, the bottom border does feel a little too dark to me. So I'm actually going to update it to gray 200. And then another thing is, let's say we take this instance and want to test it out. So first, in order for me to change uh, an individual tab, I need to click into it and then I have all the controls. It's okay, I guess, but there is a way to make it uh, more seamless. So what I'm going to do is return to the tabs list component, go to properties, go to nested instances option here, and then I'm going to select all of our instances. And so now when I return to the instance, I don't need to click into each individual tab and I can just fix it right from the tabs list. And if I were to increase the number of tabs, let's say to five, uh, they will appear here and they would be hidden if I were working with just three. And that's the reason why we added uh, ordering to the tabs, just so it's easier to find the one that you're working with. So another thing that is currently kind of off is um, if let's say we added a counter to one of the tabs, our tab list becomes unaligned, like these tabs are too high up. And the reason that happens is because the heights are now different. This one is 43, this one is 48. So the way to fix it, we're actually just going to add a fixed height to the tabs and we'll set them to be 48. And now their heights are always the same, regardless whether there is a counter or not. The last part is to do a quick component test. So I'm going to grab an example that I made prior to this video and see if we can recreate it with the component we just made. So I'm going to paste it here and then I'll search for tabs and grab instance of our tabs list. And then we want to have five tabs. And from here, I'm just going to update the text. And then, so our second tab is going to have a drop down, and then our very last one is going to be selected, have a counter and have an icon. So we'll update the counter to say five. And then we also want to update the icon to be a shopping cart. And as you can see, something clearly happened here. And this is something that I have noticed a lot. Sometimes if I add a color to an icon and then I swap and icon, it will add some weird fills. So I still haven't figured out a way how to make sure that doesn't happen. So if you have any tips or tricks on how to avoid that, please let me know. But meanwhile, we're just going to update our shopping cart icon. And looks like I just need to remove the fill from here and then make sure that all the colors are set to blue. So yeah, I guess that's why it's always a good idea to test your components. So that's it for the tabs. I am going to link this file in the description. Please let me know if you have any questions or what other tutorials you'd like to see. Uh, I hope this was useful and I'll see you next time. Bye.